So to make the skin, um, this is how the PV clay comes and you can see it's quite hard once uh, it's not need. Um, so this one I already was kneading here and it gets pretty soft. A good way to do it, uh, I really like to warm it up in my hands like that. I have quite warm hands so it makes it softer and nicer to deal with. Um, or you can just use the pasta machine or uh, to roll like this with the plastic one. Start rolling and rolling and you're gonna get there. <laughs> so, let's see. And every time that you fold it, make sure to once you start rolling, get from the where you fold to the edge so it doesn't make the air stays in. It just pushes the air out. So you can do this or you can just keep on eating with your hands. It's absolutely up to you. So once you have the clay ready to go, uh, you can open the clay in a pasta machine or you can just use the roller. I'm going to use this so I don't know if majority have a pasta machine or not. So you can see that it's not a mystery uh, not to have one. So if you're not using the cranium, what you're going to do is you're going to do the tin foil and press it. Uh, you can't hold it and be able to smash it. It needs to be firm. And then you're going to cover the tin foil with a layer of clay. You can uh, always uh, poke some holes on the tin foil to make a little bit of a cavity or you can just make it on the clay. But you can poke like with a tool like that. You can kind of like squeeze the tin foil in and shape it. It's it's not um, very hard to shape a tin foil, but you do have to kind of know the face, uh, the cranium shape to be able to do it with the tin foil without having any problem. Um, okay, so this is the thickness I opened. And you're gonna cover all the skull. Why do you need to be so thin? You don't actually, you don't need to make it so thin. But the good thing about it is why I like to do thin is because I still want to see the shape of the skeleton under my clay. So see, if I put in like that and I press in with my fingers, I can see everything underneath and that's why I like to use a thin layer and then start shaping um, the face with uh, individual pieces of clay in the right place. So I don't I don't want to miss the details of the skull. Still don't want to miss it until I have uh, more parts of the face done. So that's why I work with a thin layer. And notice that once I'm putting the layer on here. I am trying to avoid air, so I keep on pressing in the shapes and like in this bone, between this bone, and keep on pressing it so there's no air between the clay and the resin or bone, whatever you want to call it. Um, so here it doesn't really matter how you're going to do it. What matters is that you are pushing the air and bring it outside and avoiding air in between clay and resin. Okay, and then you can just squeeze them together here. You can even, if you want to cut this part off, it doesn't matter because this is going to be where the hair goes or you can smooth it out later on. And same thing here, once I get to here, I start putting the clay down there. I don't put the whole amount in one side, I kind of start pressing slowly and meeting them there and always making sure that I'm pressing the air out of here. Like this. And hopefully there's no air inside there. There you go. Now we have the skeleton here. Uh, we do have a hole on the skeleton somewhere that I can't see anymore. Um, and if you want, you can always use a um, barbecue stick to hold it like that. 
Um, you can cut it to make it shorter, so you kind of just use to don't have to squeeze the the clay here because you don't want to squeeze here or here. So I leave those parts fat so I can use it for holding like that and sometimes I also put the, the stick on the hole. But I won't because for the recording it's not very good because I can't do this and the stick keep on hitting the my table so it's not very good for recording it. But for sculpting I do use it. So I can still see the temporal uh, bone here and I also can see the eyeballs. I can see everything actually. Uh, so once I'm seeing the eyeball, the next step that I like to do is cutting the eye hole right here. So I use uh, this uh, kind of a dentist tool, I don't know the name. Uh, you can find it in dentist stores. And But you can cut with the tool you rather. So I just kind of cut, start cutting in the center of it. And I also use the center of the bone here as a to guide me. So here and here, I'm going to cut it off. And of course if you're making a, a closed eyes you don't need to worry about opening, but I'm going to make it open, so I'm going to have to open up this as much as I can. So be careful to don't scratch the eyeball underneath. Go just enough to find it and start pushing up and down slowly. And you can see already the iris showing up underneath. So I'm not giving any shape right now, I'm just opening, of course, I'm not going to open a big hole, I'm going to make it uh, like a fish, fish shape, a nice shape. Just kind of going up here and down here, uh, down here and up here and making this uh, inside corner and inside edge and outside edge thinner. There you go. And then you open just enough to make the look that you want in your sculpture. If it's kind of like scared, then you open more after. You don't need to open uh, that much right now. We just kind of want to see the eye right now. Sorry guys, my battery uh, finished and I didn't notice, but I opened this eye already, which is, was just the same as I did in here. Um, yeah, so as you can see, I'm really just opening. You can always remove the clay instead of just pushing it out like I did in this eye. Um, or you can absolutely just push it. It doesn't really matter right now. We really just need to see the eyes. Okay? Um, I'm going to go for the theory and anatomy of the eye after. So don't worry, I'm going to explain everything. Right now I just want to kind of like give a, a rough shape on this face. So I'm going to get uh, one tool like that, maybe smaller. Yeah. And I'm going to press the edge, the inside edge here and the outside edge as well. And same here, press the inside press the outside. Why am I doing that? Because the eyes are uh, an eyeball, uh, as the name says, is a ball. So the skin that goes around the eye needs to surround the ball. So you can't have a space here or here. So you push it in and beside not having a space you have to have it rounded. So you press it to make sure that it won't have a space and you're going to get the right shape as well. As you can see, I'm not very concerned about the symmetry right now. I'm just trying to get them uh, as same open as each other, so you don't get the the feeling that it's crossed eye. All right, that's all for the eyes right now. 
just as I said just a very very basic shape and and the ne next thing I'm gonna do is cutting the mouth so for the average proportions anatomy the cut of the mouth once when the person is not smiling or laughing it's just like with the mouth closed is to match the corner of the eyes here for the corner of the mouth okay so you can do it better than that you can kind of we don't really have the corner of the eye because we don't really have the eye shape yet but as I said right now it's just rough so you can mark it out like that I'm gonna mark it so you guys have it in keep it in your mind that this is what you have to do for cutting the mouth and as I said the skinny the thin layer of skin helped me to see the teeth so I can see the teeth shape and I'm gonna cut a little bit over the end of the top teeth so if you want to know why close your mouth and feel that your teeth touch the your bottom lip is a little bit over the top teeth here I'm gonna cut it here and of course obviously if you want to make an open mouth you're gonna have to open this cut you can cut until you feel the teeth especially because they're not gonna show so you doesn't matter if it's gonna scratch or not so you cut and again I'm gonna use this tool now the little bit bigger one and I'm gonna make a two marks right here on the sides just like that kind of like ready look uh, nice face here without a nose <laughs> Look like it smile once you give this, this little holes here. Okay, um, now we're gonna do a rough shape for the nose. Where does the nose go? It's like it's gonna be here, very close to the mouth. It's gonna be up there. Where if you're using the skeleton, you can see the hole right here. You can see a little bump right here. So you go, you finish the nose right under this bump right there. And for the if you are making a face without the skull I should actually give you the proportions of the face so you can follow it so once you place when you're gonna place the eyes on your head you find the center of it so here is the right center of it the eyes are in the center okay so if you go the top of the skull here and here the eyes are right in the center so once you mark the center and then you also mark the center here so you don't mess up the symmetry then you place the eyes the, dins the distance between those eyes must be enough to fit five eyes from here to here you can fit one eye here one eye one eye between the eyes the eyeball one eye between the eyes another eye and another right eye right here so one two three four five eyes that's the right distance and then you go, once you mark the eye here, you can mark the eyebrow a little bit higher, a little bit over this mark that you made in the center. A little bit over the eye is the eyebrow. It's like a little distance. So once you mark the eyebrow here, you're going to see from here to here, and you're going to share in half, and that's going to give you exactly where the nose should go. Once you have the nose, you keep on sharing. You share from the nose to the end of the jaw here, the end of the chin. You share it in three. And you're gonna have one, two, three. That's gonna give you the number one is the cut of the mouth. Number two is where the chin starts. Number three is where the chin finish. So you have um, the right proportions for your face. But if you're using the skeleton, you don't really need to worry about any of that. You can just follow what I taught you before. And the chin is kind of already shaped here. If you press it down, you're gonna have already a shape of a chin. Okay, so you can see the nose right there. When you sculpt in, you see a little bump. 
and the nose is going to finish right under this little bump in here. Now we're going to put a little bit of clay to make the nose. The shape that I use for a nose it's usually something like uh, I roll a little bit of clay and I make it thicker on one edge, thinner in, in the other edge and not very small. I like to put a little bit more clay than I'm gonna need for the nose that I'm making so I, I don't have to be adding. I just remove clay and I'm gonna put in here touching this area and the end of the nose is we already know and the start of the nose is right between the eyes so it's not in here on the forehead is in here that's one of the biggest mistakes that my students also make is bringing the nose all the way here you don't bring the nose all the way there you can see the skeleton let me get another skeleton here to show here that's a little bit smaller so you can see this is the beginning of the nose right there and it's not in the eyebrow it's right here uh, so just adding a little bit of information here as you guys saw I added a big clay coming all the way here and then I cut and I start smoothing out until I find kind of this bone but if you rather this is just the way I do things but if you rather you can just add some clay inside under this bone here coming to the little bump that I said uh, where is the end of the nose and then this is what of course when you're using the skeleton and then you add the skin over the bone here to hide it and, and go for it. So as soon as you know that the bone comes inside the nose here, the cartilage, and the, the full nose start in here to here, and then you know the shape and you know what you're doing, it doesn't really matter how you're going to reach that shape. All right, so once I have that placed in there, I'm going to go and press this nose all the way down so it gets stuck in my face like this and keep on coming and fixing it here just making sure that it's not gonna overpass the size that it should be of course this nose is gonna be smaller than that or not depends on the person that you're making but I'm not worried about that right now as I said I make a rough shape first and then I go for the details after I think I made it too big though <laughs> but it's okay because you can always that's why I like making bigger you can always pull it out like that if it's too big and then you just cut it which makes it easier than placing a little bit of pieces uh, pieces of clay here and there I rather just doing that um, so let me go back here it's kind of coming down the mouth here I'm gonna pull it up a bit to make sure it's gonna be there and the cut here I kind of messed up so I'm gonna make sure to fix it all right so there you go we have kind of a face. Uh, make sure another big mistake that my students make is uh, once they place the nose here, beside placing uh, too high on the forehead, so you already know that you're not going to do that, you're going to place it in here, is the angle that the nose goes. A lot of students make the angle too high in here, so the nose goes down. Obviously, if you're looking to someone and making this person, you're going to try to find the same angle, to say, find the same profile profile line but if you're just making a person you see the shape of the nose that you want you can always see get a reference I always tell my students the best thing to do is find references and start it out kind of copying shapes instead of just making up on your own and then once you are secure enough you can start creating your own shapes if you're working with a realistic sculpture obviously so this is the beginning it is too large of a nose if you want to make it a little bit thinner you can also make a better beginning of shape so you don't have to work so hard once you start giving the details but you don't have to here I'm using just a knife to take it off because it's very large but if you want to go um, to take like slowly you can always use a, an arch tool mine is dirty let me clean up 
So you can always use a tool like that and you kind of remove the excess of clay slowly, not just with a rough cut like I did. So let's go for the detailed na details now. And we're going to start looking to all these parts individually and let's take a look at the theory.